there are a lot of refugee and immigrant communities in the United States. Many of these youth are coming here after having experienced incredible adversity and trauma. And the resettlement process is really extremely difficult, and for some of them, they go on to develop mental health problems that can really interfere with their ability to be part of their communities. If you have no provision for those children to express their sadness, they will express it in other ways. The children's ability to be successful as learners is at stake. It was more like benign neglect. Differentiating between the naughtiness of a typical 13-year-old and a response to trauma takes a little bit of training. Sometimes we intervened with consequences when what was needed was mental health supports. What we've done is embed our mental health services in a school system. Kids are coming anyway. The school system is really valued. Education is highly valued by families. If I'm school-based, it's part of the school. It's part of the school day. Uh, parents feel this is something that's acceptable and okay. We work a lot with teachers and social workers for children who may be needing extra intervention. If a child has had a trauma history, we are very much available to the teachers. We do trainings on trauma and, and culture, and we also do groups. Within the school, we run groups for all the kids in the English language learners classroom. Well, what did you just say? I just said, I feel comfortable staying here. You do? OK. Do you think we can yeah. talk about goals that we have for the school year? Yeah. yeah. To play soccer to play soccer. Do you remember how we made the group goals last year? What do we want to like accomplish? Learn how to respect each other. I like that. To behave. To behave. No, I yeah, you want to call If a child okay. begins to show significant mental health needs, it's a very easy next step to go up to the family and say, you know, we've been meeting with so-and-so in the group. He's really benefiting from it. I think you might really also benefit from meeting individually. And in fact, maybe we could work with your family also. Here's what we're seeing and here's what we're thinking we might do. We were talking about talking to mom more. You worry a lot about her and if we can start a communication where we actually ease his anxiety by talking about how safe mom is, reframing his concern. It makes perfect sense. If he comes from a refugee camp where he was in chronic danger, he's going walking home from school, he's in chronic danger, why would he believe that anyone in his family is safe yeah. until we actually address the, mm -hmm. the core issue of, mm -hmm. of safety? So I'll be curious. It's so important that when you create a program, it takes into consideration the way that people relate to each other in a culture. Especially when we're talking about the needs of children, that we're expecting parents to trust us, caring for their children, helping their children. We want them to know we are there for the family. There were no Somali social workers in the entire state of Massachusetts before we started this program. We partnered with Boston University School of Social Work, and they provided two full scholarships and mentoring and training to two individuals from the Somali community. So then they, they, they all talked about how uh, in Somalia there is healthy and mad. But then in America, no, no, no. You have depressed, anxiety. And you have all these things. And there's no Somali definition of those words. Of those yeah. words. And that's One of the big successes for us has been that we've started to have families ask for services, saying, how can I get my child in to be part of this program? My behavior to other schools in Boston. These kids are part of our communities, and kids in our communities do well, we all do well.